In the first part of this question, we have to find the speed of the truck as it hits the point A at the bottom of a ramp. Now many of my students will try and do this using SUVAT, and you probably could do, but it's much quicker to do it considering energy changes. Think about the uh, potential energy at the top turning into kinetic energy at the bottom. That means that mgh is equal to half mv squared. And a great advantage here is you can see the m's are cancelling out straight away. So that leaves us with the square root of 2gh equals to v. It's great because you don't have to know the mass. When you put in the numbers from the question, you get 12.5 meters per second. The second part of this question asks us to consider the acceleration of the truck as it moves down a curved surface. We can imagine at each point of its journey an acceleration along the side of the, along the length of the track, and you can see it's changing its direction as it goes. I've created a nice diagram to help with this. Hopefully this will give us a bit of leeway to play with. Let's consider the force is acting on the bottom position, i.e. when it's horizontal. First of all, here's the weight and here's the reaction, which is at 90 degrees to the surface, isn't it always though, the reaction? So we know in this case that W and R are equal. And since that angle is a right angle, for both of those angles are right angles, there is absolutely no component of acceleration in the horizontal direction, and so there is no acceleration. Moving to the middle position, the weight clearly hasn't changed, and the reaction is still at 90 degrees to the surface. But the weight isn't at 90 degrees to the surface, and therefore has a component in the direction of the green arrow. In other words, down the surface of the plane. So now we have some acceleration for our object. And we'll call it weight S along the slope. Now that's unbalanced and therefore we have some acceleration. So let's look at the top place now. So let's go straight on with the weights and the reaction just like before. The component down the slope has a smaller angle between itself and W. Therefore, there is a bigger component down the slope of the weight. So WS. WS is greater than it is in the first one that we looked at. What we call position two, I guess. So that means that the acceleration in position one is bigger than in position two. And as we saw, it's zero in the last part. Part C picks up where part B finished off and suggests that as long as our trolley or our mass falls the same height, it doesn't matter which path it takes, they are going to have the same speed at the end. And of course, this is true because both masses are dropping the same height, therefore gaining the same amount of kinetic energy, i.e. the same as the potential energy that they've lost. Therefore, they will both have the same kinetic energy increase at the bottom, and therefore both have the same speed. This last part then is a typical AQA, let's have a chat about a physics problem, and as long as you have a bash, you'll get some credit for it. In our first instance, this trolley is going to have a constant momentum to the right, we are told that uh, friction and air resistance are negligible. We now have a situation where some little raindrops are falling into the trolley. Since they obviously have a mass and a direction, they have some momentum. And you might think initially that this would increase the momentum of the trolley, but no. The reason for this is because the momentum of the raindrops is at 90 degrees to the momentum of the trolley, and therefore the velocity has no effect on each other, or the two velocities have no effect on each other, such that the momentum of the raindrops will have no effect on the momentum of the trolley because they're at 90 degrees. 
This means then that the mass of the truck is increasing, but the momentum is going to stay the same. Therefore, the speed will have to decrease a bit. What about vertical momentum though? Clearly, the truck has no vertical momentum at the start, but is now receiving a bit of vertical momentum from the raindrops. Therefore, there must be a momentum change upwards as well of some form. And I expect this has got something to do with the water splashing around as the raindrops arrive. Tough question, that one, those last two bits especially. So I hope you found that useful and thought-provoking. As always, please like my page. Bye.